We're going to start our new topic, which is called circle theorems. But just before we get into circle theorems, we need to remind ourselves about circle terminology and some basic angle rules, because these will all play an important part in this topic. So first of all, circle terminology. When you see a circle and you have a line in it, inside it and it's marked O, O always represents the center of the circle. Now, if you have a line drawn in a circle, but there's no O on it, then you cannot assume that you know where the center is. That's important. So we do know where the center is here because it's labeled O. So any line that goes through the center of the circle and joins one point on a circumference to another point on the circumference, everybody knows that that is called the diameter. Everybody also knows that when you join the center of the circle to a point on its circumference, that distance is called the radius. There is a third type of line which we can draw inside a circle. We can draw a line that joins two points on the circumference but does not go through the center of the circle. That type of line is called a chord, C H O. R D. So just make sure we are 100% familiar with those three types of line. Diameter, radius, chord, and remember if you're given O in your diagram, that means you know where the center is. Now, further to all of this, we have to also remind ourselves of some basic angle properties. S things we would have done away back in year eight, year nine. So the first angle property we need to remember is angles on a straight line. We call it ASL for short. Again, you know the drill. You have a straight line and then you have two angles that are on that straight line and they're beside each other and they cover a total angle of 180 degrees. And as I say, they add up to give 180. Okay, so that's angles on a straight line. They're beside each other and they add together to give 180 degrees. The next angle property is vertically opposite angles, otherwise known as the X rule. So in order to apply this rule, you need an X. You need per two perfect straight lines that intersect to form an X. The angles formed opposite each other in the X would be the same. So C and D would be the same, but also A and B would be the same. Okay, third property, alternate angles or the Z rule. This property involves parallel lines. So remember, we denote parallel lines with arrows on them. So clearly, these two lines are parallel, and we have a third line joining them. That's called a transversal. The angles which are formed inside the Z and at the points of the Z will be the same. Alternate angles, so A equals B. Angle property number four is known as the interior angles, or the U rule. Again, this property involves parallel lines. So you need two parallel lines and a third line joining them. The angles inside the U, okay, inside the U at the corners, they're not necessarily the same, but they add together to give 180. Okay, interior angles. Okay, angle property number five then is called corresponding angles or the F rule. Again, for this property, you need two parallel lines and a third line joining them. And the rule says that the angles that are inside the F and at the point of the F are the same. They're corresponding. So A and B are exactly the same. They have to be inside the F, okay, and at the points Okay, at the corners here. So A is at the corner of this line and this line, and B is at the corner of this line and this line. So that's what we're saying. Those two angles are the same. They're corresponding. Note, because the F is upright here, the corresponding angles lie underneath the parallel lines in the F. Okay. Angle property number six, really easy. Angles in a triangle, known as AIT for short. You all know angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. 
angle property 7, isosceles triangle. So isosceles triangle has two equal sides. And if it's got two equal sides, it's got two equal angles. Remember that you to get the angles that are the same, you look for the corner where the two identical sides meet. And then you go to the opposite corners and those will be the angles that are the same. And then finally, angle property number eight, angles in a quadrilateral, AIQ for short, you all know that they all add together to give 360. So just make sure all of those angle properties we've just discussed are firmly in your head and you've learned them because they will be important when we work with circle theorems.